and welcome to Devana Lee Design Studio. My name is Nicole Reed, and we're back again for Patchwork and Quilting Basics Part 2. So today I thought I would cover a few extra things that you're going to need. So in our first video we covered all our general tools that we need for everything from quick unpicks right through to marking devices. So today we're going to be focusing on the different things that you need to do some patchworking and or quilting. Okay so you can see here we've got an array of tools, everything from marking device right down to presser feet. So if you are new to the hobby, you're going to want to make sure that you have several items on hand. Now I'm going to start with the presser feet and you can see I've got a ton of them here. So the main important one is a quarter inch presser foot. So I'll just bring that up to you. So this is the basic sort of one that you get with most uh, at most patchwork shops or even with your machines so you can see it's got a little bit of an odd shape and it's got some little markings on the side um, so this is used for accurate piecing of your patchwork but they can actually look different so it will depend on your machine that you get and um, some of the higher end machines actually come with your patchwork feet so you don't need to go hunting for them but if you've got a sort of a, a basic machine you may have to go and purchase one so this one here as you can see on the side it doesn't have any sort of guide and you're lining your fabric up on the edge of this and your needles going into that um, center hole there you cannot do any sort of zigzag or decorative stitch with this particular needle uh, sorry presser foot this is just for straight stitching so that's where it's perfect for patchworking so I'm just going to show you a couple of others of different types that you can get and the most common ones that are available so this one is just a generic foot it came in my little pack here it doesn't it, it fits most makes and models of machines of your basic machines um, I know that this fits on a vintage singer it fits on most basic singer uh, machines it also fits on brother and um, Janome uh, machines as well so that's a, a really good generic basic one and I'll put some links down below where you can get these presser feet from and uh, they're, they're very affordable so you'll be able to get them so the next sort of foot that you will um, come across is uh, again it looks very similar to the foot that we just had then but as you can see on the side it's got a little guide so I'll show you that way. It's got a little guide there and that's where the edge of your fabric runs along. Again, you cannot do any zigzagging or um, decorative stitches with that. It's just a straight stitching foot. So you need to be very aware of that. Again, that one fits Singer, Brother and Janome and it came in my little pack that you can see there below it. And uh, so it's again, it's just another quarter inch foot. Okay. This one here is off my Singer Quantum machine, so you can see again this is quite um, a different looking foot, but again it is a quarter inch foot, and I basically can do quarter quarter inch either way. So this is perfect for when I'm doing like half square triangles or anything like that. Most of the time I do most of my piecing on my vintage machine these days, but when I'm doing uh, chain piecing or half square triangles or anything like that, I jump onto my Singer Quantum and this foot's perfect for that because it's a quarter inch, running the fabric along here is quarter inch and running the fabric along there is quarter inch. So I can go left or right. Again, you can only use this for straight stitching. You can't do any any sort of zigzag with that okay so that's our quarter inch foot and you know di di different machines have different looking feet so just um if you've got a husband or anything like that just go to your local stockist and they will have the appropriate feet for your machine short of that if you've got a basic machine that didn't really come with any sort of uh, presser feet just your basic um, or purpose foot and all the rest of it I recommend just grabbing one of these uh, little trays of all the different feet so um i'll put a link as i said i'll put a link down below where you can find these supplies and you can do a little bit of research for yourself so moving on from the quarter inch feet we move on to um, some open toe feet now these can be used for different applications um, you can see here i've got two different types they generally are um, uh, metal or plastic so you can see here they look pretty much the same so this one here is off my quantum and um, I believe the FAF uh, 
foot also looks similar to that and this one is just a generic one so it fits uh, your basic singer uh, brother and Janome. so this foot here I actually use quite a bit in my patchworking I use it when I am doing any sort of applique machine based applique because I can see the project that I'm working on and I also use it for um, when I'm doing mini quilts and I'm doing in ditch uh, stitching because I find it very easy I can see the seam and I can do that in ditch stitching so we will cover things like that in this series um, if you're not too sure what I'm talking about so you can see there that if I sit that down you can see it's quite open and you can um, clearly see what you're working on now the good thing about this particular one and most of the metal open toe feet that I have found over the years there is a little notch mark uh, just there you can see that just there and that mark is perfect for um, lining up what you're going to applique down or even the seam if you're going to do some in ditch stitching so I can line the seam up there or I can line the edge of the shape that I'm about to applique and then I can adjust my uh, needle to either go a little bit further in or come a little bit closer to that mark and I can really gauge that eighth of, eighth of an inch seam that I want uh, top stitching that I want for my applique this foot is perfect because I can do zigzag I can do decorative stitches I can do herringbone stitch I can do many different stitches with this one without the fear of the needle hitting um, the the metal part of it and it's the same with the plastic one too while the openings probably not as wide as that metal one you can still see that and it doesn't have the center mark so that makes it a little bit trickier to line everything up but you can still see your work very clearly and use that okay so that's sort of our patchworking side of things out of the way and as I said um, you will find a link down below for uh, the uh, presser feet and that's what all these generic ones came out of so you get a good selection at a really reasonable price which is a really good thing to to have okay so the next thing that we're going to move on to is our quilting feet so we've gone from patchworking and now we're going to quilting now there are different ways of quilting things as I said I used my open toe for in ditch quilting um, and that I usually just use on mini quilts and stuff like that because I actually have the long arm but if I'm doing a bit bigger quilt and I want to do uh, an offset of quilting so run alongside a shape or anything like that I generally use my walking foot now while it looks uh, a bit daunting it is a great foot because it does, it's an even feed foot is what is also called as well so um, it might be called walking foot an even feed foot um, but basically what it does is it has I don't know if you can see that or not it's got some like what look like feed dogs on the top it then it's got the presser foot underneath and then that sits against the um, against the the presser the feed dogs and basically it evenly feeds your quilt through and it's great for going through those thicker um, items so because it's helping it to move through the machine a lot easier so if you don't have a walking foot I do recommend that you get one because it is an invaluable tool you will use it quite often and it makes the quilting especially for straight line quilting and um, cross hatching and stuff like that it makes the job so much easier so definitely have a look at a walking foot next we move on to uh, what we call either darning foot embroidery foot or a free motion foot and as you can see here I've got three different ones so they all look different depending on uh, your machine so this one here is off the uh, quantum and it's got it, it just ma makes it um, a little bit easier for you to see your work um, it's it is raised off your quilt so you're able to move your quilt through your machine and these are all for domestic machines not for um, long arms or anything like that so basically um, this is off, as I said this is off my quantum uh, singer and I don't use my quantum as much as I probably should for free motion but I'm definitely working on that to do some mini quilts and stuff like that but yes yeah, so you can see there it's got this little contraption here that sits up above and it's sort of a little bit um, it's got a spring on it and it's got like a, a c-shaped 
uh, foot or a u-shaped foot whichever way you're looking at it so you can see where you're going and um, again this is not for decorative stitching this is just for straight stitching and when you're quilting doing your free motion so that's one shape of them and then you can see this one here this one's similar to the other one except this foot is actually fully closed basically moving everything that I need to move through the the machine so I just again it's same as the the other one but it's just got a closed in foot now the most common one that you will probably find is this particular one here so you can see here again it's got a circle there it's sort of raised up this sits on your bar that goes up and down and again this is called a darning foot embroidery or free motion foot so you can see that there are different types of them so if you go to your quilt shop uh, just ask them for a free motion foot and they'll know exactly what it is or if you walk in and ask and accidentally ask for a darning foot that's that's basically what you're going to get because it makes it easy for you to move your quilt through the machine all right so we've covered the uh, quilting side of things now you might be um, wondering how you're going to put your quilt together and how we keep all the three layers together well that's quite easy when you're working on a domestic machine you do need to have these uh there's many products out there but this is my go-to one it's just a curved safety pin and you can see there that it's actually got a curve in it it just makes it easier for getting through those three layers so you pin all those three layers together usually about three to four finger spaces between each pin and you alternate them and that will hold everything together for you okay um, you can also machine baste it or hand baste it so you'd use a cotton thread and you just would stitch through it and you make your stitches quite long and you do it in a grid fashion so you can actually put it together like that as well um, you're going to need a thimble especially if you're doing uh, hand basting or even some um, hand quilting you will need to also have some quilting needles which i actually don't have on hand at the moment but they are just a smaller needle and that makes it easy to rock it through um, my thimble that i use is a clover thimble it's an open one and it's adjustable so i can adjust it for any finger that i need it to go onto um, because you know your fingers do get tired when you're doing a little bit of hand quilting um, for a couple of hours so i swap it around and um, I will put a link down below this is uh, really I like this one because I don't have to as you can see I've got long fingernails so um, it's that my fingers sit in there quite well and it's adjustable and it's even, even got this little lip here that you can help to push things through okay so I will put a link down below for that one that is a that is a must a must have tool if you're hand quilting okay so you can see here i have a couple of marking devices so we've got i did cover these um, in my last one so we've got some chico pens some friction pens and mark be gone i tend not to use these too much on uh, customers quilts i tend to uh, steer away from them because of the controversy behind the friction pen and even some of the watermark mark ones leave a faint line um, so I tend to shy away from the friction pen as I said basically because it comes back even though it's removable with um, with heat it can come back in the cold um, but I have learnt a little tip with these and I have tried it on mine and I've had none come back um, use nappy wipes to get the gel out of the quilt but the most the most thing that I used are the charcoal pens to mark out um, designs and all that sort of stuff so that's sort of what i i lean towards next you're going to need some uh cotton thread or i do use poly th polyester thread for quilting but if i'm hand quilting or i'm um, doing an heirloom quilt or anything like that i do 100 percent cotton and my favorite brand is signature i've never had any issues with those all well, they're a good cotton and that's that's my favorite brand i do use other brands as well but that is my um go-to brand they have some vibrant colors and they have some really lovely variegated threads so that that um, is pretty much what I use on a daily basis and then I have uh, these thread snips so thread snips I these are just to basically cut my threads after I'm patchworking but when I'm quilting I have these cute little um, snips and they've got a bit of I don't think you'll be able to see that on camera but they've got a little bit of a curve so I can get really close to the fabric without fear 
of cutting the fabric and that gets rid of the um, threads and, and stuff like that especially um, on the back of my qu mini quilts that I do that have applique and stuff like that I usually thread the long threads back through to the back tie them off and then snip as close as I can to the um, to the knot and the best part is they're just a squeeze one so it makes it nice and easy to use Alrighty, so we're finished going through the patchwork and, and the quilting side of things and the different things we use. But the one other thing that I like to use, and I don't use it very often, but every now and again on my mini quilts when I machine sew uh, my bindings on, which I might add is not my favourite method of putting binding on. I prefer to uh, sew it onto the front, roll it over and hand stitch it on the back. But sometimes, time permitting, I don't have the time to do that. Um, then I can use this binding foot so you can see there it's got some marks on it for different size binding and I've done this used this one not as often as I would like but I have used it for smaller projects so when I need to bind say a book cover or something like that I've used that so it might be something else that you might want to look at especially if you don't like hand sewing your bindings on thank you very much for joining me today I really do hope that you enjoyed this video if you did give us a thumbs up down below and hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon beside it and of course as always we love to hear from our community so leave us a comment down below and tell us is there something that I else that you'd like me to cover. For those that don't know, my name's Nicole Reed for Divana Lee Design Studio and this is Quilting and Patchwork Basics. And I'll see you all again next time. Bye for now.